Hello viewer, welcome back to 54A. A uh, couple of people have been asking <coughs> on Facebook etc about uh, starting segmented turning. Now there's loads of good videos out there, uh, people are a lot more experienced than I am and they do some absolutely fantastic work. But I'm just going to sort of run you through the basics, what you'll need to get started. Uh, doing it just a simple ring, maybe a simple bowl, a few of the things that you'll need um, to get going. So I'll just adjust the camera onto my temporary workbench and I'll run through a few things with you. Okay, now the most important thing you're going to need is a compass. And the two most important things you're going to need are a compass and a piece of paper. Actually the three most important things you're going to need are a compass, a piece of paper and a ruler. And <laughs> I could carry on like that all day. Some of these digital calipers, digital uh, protractor rather, comes in very handy. You've got to be accurate. That's the main thing with the segmenting is accuracy at all times. If you've got a gap you can't glue it up. Now then you basically, to start you off, zoom in a little bit for you. Say I'm going to do a 10 segment ring. Um, I think this is uh, about 7 inches, so you get your compass and draw yourself a circle however wide you want your segmented circles to be, your segmented ring to be. Now every circle since the beginning of time has had 360 degrees in it. And they always have had and they always will have 360 degrees in them. So however many segments you want to put in your circle, you're going to divide that into 360. Now to keep things simple, because that's the way I am, I'm going to do a 10 segment. 10 into 360. 36. Draw a line with your ruler right through the centre of the circle. There's your centre. Then set your protractor. If you haven't got one of those, you can do it with the old school protractor. They work just as well for marking things out. Set a line 36 degrees. There. You don't have to draw all 10. One's plenty. Now then, before you cut your segment, you've got to decide how wide you're going to go. Now this circle, as I said, is 7 inches. If you go from this point here to that point there I'll just mark it out okay you've got a slight arc here now so at the points your circle is seven inches but by the time you've turned it down and got knocked the points off on the lathe you're going to end up, that's going to be the high point in the centre there. So you're going to lose about a quarter of an inch. But you're going to lose a quarter of an inch all around your bowl or whatever you're making. So in actual fact you're going to lose a half an inch off the width. <coughs> So, you're going to end up with a bowl or dish or whatever that is six and a half inches wide. If you're not too fussy, that's fine. But if you're really determined to keep to the measurements, then you've got to do a sort of seven and a half inch circle to make a seven inch bowl. Always add that extra little bit on. If you're not fussy to within half an inch, it doesn't matter. So, you then measure from that point 
to that point that's about 55 mil you then set your saw up now I'll show you what else you'll need now now then a mitre sled is really handy it's not a necessity if you haven't got a table saw you can do this on your mitre saw but I think that the sled is uh, a lot better they're really easy to make there's loads of videos out there I got this pattern off uh, Stephen Ogle's site and made a few of my own adjustments and it works well a really good blade is the next thing you want um, I've got a general purpose Freud blade here which is a both cross cut and ripping so it does both jobs nicely then get your piece of wood <coughs> get a nice fresh piece and now I'm only using bits of pine here so it doesn't really matter I'm not, I don't want to throw any sort of top quality wood away so you need to get your angle now I did say 36 degrees on there which is correct but each segment just get one for you each segment has got an angle on both sides so you have to divide the 36 by 2 18 degrees set your stop to 18 degrees now you've got to be really exact on this this is where the digital protractor comes in very handy setting up against your blade if you haven't already marked your, your sled out <coughs> now when you're setting up against the blade it's, uh, it's a bit awkward this is doing it with one hand but still you know the tips of the blade there's little sort of carbide tungsten tips on you don't want your protractor to touch those you want to be flat against the blade otherwise it's going to throw your measurements out and then set your stop up accordingly to whatever angle you're cutting so you take the end off first always clamp it down saves any kickback and run your segments through now I've done a few but I'll just demonstrate with a few more Ten segments. And in true TV fashion, here's one I made earlier. Let's just get the uh, camera down a bit for you. <clears throat> there you go, that was the one I did yesterday, all glued up nicely. Now these segments I've cut a bit smaller because I want that to be the next layer now this is easy as long as you've got your angles right you should be okay but there is a way around it if you are very slightly out so what you've got to do get your 10 segments or however many you're using have a good dry fit run see how good or bad your marking up is right now that looks pretty good to me it should be because it's set at the exact same angle as I did this circle however if you are very slightly out and I, I do mean slightly if you've just got a little gap like so 
Yeah, they're not quite lining up. You might have been half a degree out. Then there is a way around it. And I'll show you how to do that because it's, it's quite simple. But you need a couple of bits of scrap wood. So what you do is you glue up five together and five together. Then you put a piece of wood there and there. Obviously you don't glue it, just a dry fit. Then when you glue these five together as well, you make your circle with your wedges in. Or little bits of scrap, they're not actually wedges. Then put your clamp on, nice and tight. When it's dry you will end up with two semicircles. Which you can just run on the sander, put it through the plane until both surfaces meet up. So if you say if you are a little bit out with your with your cutting, with your angles, it doesn't matter. If you're a great five or ten degrees out like like so, then you're gonna have problems because you're going to lose all the thickness of your wedges when you're sanding them down and you're gonna end up with something that looks really odd. So I'm just going to get on with gluing these up now. Again, it's another simple process. It doesn't take too long. But I do recommend you do it either on a piece of paper or a bit of cling film. Because you don't want it all over your work surface or wherever you are gluing. I'm just doing it on my mitre sled for demonstration purposes. Bit of glue. Use whatever tool you want. I usually use my finger. Now you're, you're gluing end grain to end grain here. So don't be afraid, put quite a bit on. When you've got it on, just squash them together, run it up, rub it up a bit. You can feel it starting to grip. Onto the surface. Wipe the excess off if you want to. That's your first pair. Again, not much glue left in there, good job I ordered some more. So this is only pine, so there won't be a, a really brilliant finish on it anyway, but never mind. There's your two semicircles as I was trying to explain if you're a little bit out with your angles. <clears throat> These look pretty good to me but still I shall put the wedges in just to demonstrate. You clamp them up like that they'll find their natural angle. I'll just get my screwdriver. Now these pipe clamps, hose clamps are really handy and you can put as many together as you want. I've got two together here. I have used three together for, for bigger circles. And then just uh, take it to the edge, it's a lot easier to get the screwdriver on. And tighten it up. Now before you go too tight, 
any adjustments you need to make and press it down nice and flat and then really squeeze it up as tight as you like and you can see all the glue starting to ooze out now and should end up with two perfect semicircles I'm going to leave that to dry for a few hours and then you can sand it off back in a minute when everything's dry you can start assembling but what you will need is uh, a base for your bowl now I've got this bit of whatever it is um, I think it may be a sycamore and I turned a tenon on the end so I can get it in my jaws of my chuck that's nice and flat so that's what you'll need to start off your base with. Then the smallest ring will be glued onto that. The next ring onto so there like that. And I found this what I made, I don't know, six months ago. It's a 16 segment mahogany ring, which I'll probably use for the top. Like so. But, so the most important thing, let everything dry, just leave it for a few hours, go and do something else. Don't be tempted to take your clamp off before. Um, that's it basically. You'll end up with a ring like that, which will you can either put it through your planer, or your drum sander if you've got one. I made one that fits on the lathe, so it's only cost about 10 quid altogether. And you're away. So that's the basics of starting a segmented object, plate, dish, anything you want really. The basics are all the same. Accuracy is the most important thing. Accuracy, a bit of patience, take your time. A good sharp blade. If you haven't got a uh, miter saw and you haven't got a table saw, yes you can cut them by hand. You'll have to make yourself a little jig first, and it's going to take you quite a while. But uh, don't be put off. If you haven't got hardly any equipment at all, you can still do segmenting. The only one I wouldn't recommend is really cut them on the bandsaw, because <coughs> you just can get that little bit of waving with the blade. Um, most of them are okay nowadays, but you never know, you just might be off a little bit. And then you're going to have to end up sanding every segment, which can be a bit of a pain. So in the next video, we'll start putting this together and see if we can actually make a little bowl out of it. That's about it. Uh, nice short video just for people that I say they've been asking me. They want to start segmenting, but uh, haven't really got a clue how to start. That's how you start. Don't be frightened of it. And when you get really good at it, you have a look at some of the extremely intricate pieces that are on YouTube. Um, Gord Rock. Now then, what a, what a man. I mean, his workshop is absolutely immaculate. And he does this lovely Indian blanket design. Now, I've tried that myself the other day. And um, I just gave up. I'm not that good yet, but I shall keep practicing on easier things like this. So I'll see you soon. Thanks very much for watching and thanks very much for subscribing. I'm very nearly at the 500 mark now, so uh, keep telling your friends <laughs> and uh, I'll see you on the next one when we do something with this. Bye for now.